Okay. Hey everyone, this is the uh, welcome call, the second welcome co call for cohort six of OLS. Yeah, my, I nearly got my, my um, tongue tied there, but now I got it right. Um, so today we are going to have the chance to introduce ourselves to one another, to talk a little bit about what OLS is and what we're doing over the next few weeks. Um, and also to talk a little bit about our projects. So thank you to everyone who's been filling in the fantastic um, icebreaker questions with your movies. And thank you to everyone who's filled out the roll call. Please do so if you haven't. Um, I'm gonna go through some reminders. And when I do this, I'm going to always refer back to the line number in the etherpad. So hopefully you can follow along if you wish to do so. Um, oh, and my other favorite etherpad tip is Choose a color you like. I, I I have to be yellow. I don't know about you, but it's it's just my color. It's, it's how I have to express as me. So if you're in the etherpad and you want to set a color, on the very top right, uh, right now it says 15 and it has a sort of people icon. You can click on there um, and you can select a color for you and you can also put your name. Um, and if you do that, when people hover, if they're using a mouse, when they, people hover over what you've written, it'll show your name as well. So it's kind of convenient. It's optional. You don't have to put your name if you'd rather not. But um, that's how you choose a color and add your name. Um, so uh, this is the third week. You have hopefully had at least one mentor mentee call and possibly two by now. Um, and we run the welcome call twice just to make sure we get as many people as possible able to attend at different time zones and different days of the week. Um, so one request that we have when people are participating in this call, try and keep your microphone on mute. This doesn't mean don't speak. It just means that if a truck or a construction worker decides to start doing something loud nearby, it doesn't come through and distract everyone. Um, if you have something you would like to say, unmuting is very welcome. Unmute, ask your questions. You can type it in chat um, or you can type it in the etherpad where there are sections for questions. Um, we have a code of conduct, which as a general rule means that we ask that everyone treat one another with the respect that you'd like to receive from other people when you're in RLS spaces or when you are representing RLS. Um, if you look at line 85, you can see where that code of conduct is. And I'm actually just going to pause for a moment and give everyone a second just to open that up and maybe just skim through or keep it open in a tab just to have a look at the code of conduct. Um, so I will just leave a moment or two of silence while everyone has a chance to look. I managed to wet my throat with a little drink as well. Fantastic. Um, so I'm not gonna ask you to read the whole thing right now. Um, that could take a little while, but keep, keep it open. Do try and read through it. Uh, we say this because we want uh, our environment to be welcoming and friendly as much as possible. Um, so it's very important that we repeatedly make it clear that this is important. Um, and if at any point you believe that you've witnessed or experienced anything that isn't in line with the way that we suggest people behave, you can report this to myself, uh, Berenice, Malvika, Emmy or Paz. We are the organizers. Um, you can either use the team at Open LifeSite email address. Or if you prefer, you can actually email any one of us individually if there's, for example, a reason, like if I've done something inappropriate, you might want to email Paz instead. Um, so uh, as I mentioned earlier, we're being recorded and we are being transcribed via Otter AI. Um, transcription doesn't work in breakout rooms and we will have a breakout room. So uh, what I will suggest is actually right now, I'm gonna ask everyone just to quickly edit your name. And the reason I'll ask for that is that for breakout rooms, we offer the option of written breakout rooms as well as spoken breakout rooms. So written breakout rooms mean that you can still participate uh, easily even if you're in a quiet hotel room or anywhere else where you might need transcription and you cannot use the transcription. Um, so the way that we ask people to indicate their preference, um, either spoken or written, is by editing your name um, and adding W in front if you prefer written or S in front if you prefer spoken. Uh, so for me to do this, I click on participants um, and then in the participants window beside my name, I can click on more and I can click on rename. And if I chose a written name, that would put W in front of my name, just like that. Sorry, I, I, I need to find what's the difference between uh, um, speak between and write. Between the two? Yeah. yeah. 
Uh, so the um, a breakout room um, is effectively like just dividing us into small groups uh, and the conversation can ha happen spoken the way you or I just did or it might be that instead people choose to interact via the chat or via the etherpad in a written way. I can see quite a few of you have done that. Uh, if there's any reason you cannot um, do this, cannot edit your name easily, uh, we will ask and we will double check with you and then we'll assign you to the correct room. So don't worry too much if you can't do that easily right now. But thank you very much to everyone who has been able to do so. Um, okay, where are we next? Ah, the lightning round table. Okay, this is where we get to tell everyone very briefly who we are. Um, so the call's big, we have quite a few people here, um, and there's always the risk of introductions that one person gets to speak for five minutes, and one person unfortunately gets to speak for five seconds. Our attempt to circumvent this is that we're going to ask very specifically for four things. Um, so I'm going to post those things also in the chat as a reminder, and I'm going to try and do it, and I always do it really badly, and I'm a terrible example. But let me give a go. Uh, then I will nominate the next person to go. And then I will ask the person who is down to then nominate the next person. I'll be keeping track so that we'll roughly know who has gone and who hasn't gone. Um, just by putting an emoji beside your name in the roll call if you have gone. Um, anyway, my name is Yo. I am uh, the Executive Director of Open Life Science. I am based in the United Kingdom near Cambridge. My project is Open Life Science and my most recent hobby is going to be uh, home improvement or DIY. So lots and lots of painting and screwing and drilling things. I will pass on to the next person I can see, Kim Martin. Hello, uh, so my name is Kim Martin. I'm in Stellenbosch, South Africa at the moment, which is actually a beautiful, picturesque place with lots of mountains. Um, project name is um, actually project name at this point fair forest i keep on abbreviating it too just uh yeah f fyi i'm a rollover from the previous cohort so i've i managed to miss graduation I'm, I'm in this cohort now my most recent hobby i don't think i've got hobbies oh i tried to grow mushrooms recently not the magic kind just normal ones uh and um i'm going to go visit someone who grows them commercially soon just because i'm interested Uh, nominating Elena. You mean you mean me, Elena? Yes. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. So Elena, Elena Gidia, I'm based in Turin, and uh, I'm not a researcher. I I'm I work at the University of Turin as uh, in, in the staff support researchers. So my project would be about uh, how to improve my training skills. So how to give an open science. Uh, effective training and hobby. Oh gosh, I, I have several, but I be taking photos. I really love taking photos. And my, I give the floor to Harini. Is it right the pronunciation? Yes, that's right. Hi, uh, I'm Harini. I am a PhD student in Zurich, so that's where I am right now. Uh, so I brought uh, a project called OPC Hack, which is an open science hackathon to this cohort of OLS. And I have to say one of my recent hobbies has been boxing in the last eight weeks, I want to say. Yeah, um, it's that time in the PhD, let's say. So. <laughs> um, I would like to nominate Alden, is that right? Hi, I'm Alden. Um... I'm currently in San Francisco, California, so hence the, the nice morning light I've got here, um, but I live in London where I'll be returning on Monday. And my project name is very long, I really should come up with something snappier, preparing ISNET stakeholder engagement framework for open and collaborative development. <laughs> I had to read it. So um, that's my project. And then in terms of a most recent hobby, I have a lot of hobbies, but um, yeah, Antarctica. Uh, my most recent, I would say, is houseplants. I got my first houseplant in, in my current flat in London, and I really like it. And I'm hoping to move to a flat with a little more space and would like to uh, fill it with some houseplants when I have the space. 
Oh, and then I will throw to Irene. Hi, yeah, uh, my name is Irini. I'm joining the call from Cambridge uh, in the UK, uh, so pretty close to you. Um, my project is also very long, and I don't remember the full title, uh, but it's about building <laughs> community around the uh, the project that I work on in my day job, which is um, a big collaborative project using artificial intelligence methods um, to diagnose and hopefully prevent uh, multiple long-term health conditions. Um, the most recent hobby that I've picked up is rowing, but I am currently knitting a baby blanket, so. <laughs> we have a quick note that it can be a little challenge to um, sometimes follow the conversation live. Uh, do you want to, um, I'll, I'll just read out uh, for Paul. Um, so by the way, anyone, if you would rather not introduce uh, spoken, then is absolutely okay just to post in the chat. So I'll read for Paul. Um, hi everyone, my name is Paul. I currently live in San Diego, California. Beautiful place. Uh, my project focuses on developing an open collaborative peer review journal. And a hobby I started recently is free diving. And Paul, I would love to know more about free diving. Um, that sounds super cool. Um, and I, I, Feeling the need to breathe deep and get oxygen in now. Uh, <laughs> Paul, who would you like to um, nominate to go next? Andrea, over to you. Hello, um, my name is Andrea. I am a Colombian biologist and uh, I am currently speaking from Bogota, Colombia, but I actually live in Merced, California. And uh, I am a, a mentor in this cohort. So I know the presence is optional, but I want to say hi. And um, my recent uh, hobby, I, I have no, not recent hobbies, like not, not, not anything usual, uh, but I am a bike rider and uh, that's basically. Um, the next, um, Rushda, can you, I hope I, I pronounce it well. Yes, you pronounced it correctly. Uh, hi, everyone. I'm Rishta. Uh, I live in Pune, in India. My project is uh, multi-omics profiling and analysis of cardiovascular diseases. And the most recent hobby that I've, well, I've, I've tried to uh, work on my journaling skills. I used to do it back in school, and I've been trying my hand at it again. Uh, the person I'd like to nominate to go next is Mahmoud. Hi, everyone. Um, my name is Mahmoud. Uh, I'm from Nigeria. Um, uh, our project is the Open Science Community Nigeria. We want to make our science more open and accessible to uh, academic, academics in Nigeria. And uh, my recent hobby is uh, actually traveling, meeting people. Thank you. I would like to nominate uh, Fabio. Hi, my name is Fabio Ivo. I am from Rio de Janeiro, Brazil. I am a Brazilian biologist. And my project name is Making Science Simple and Accessible. And my most recent hobby is Ping pong or table tennis is just adding to me. And I will pass to Roman. Hello, everyone. My name is Romulo. I'm also from Rio de Janeiro. And I am in the same project with Fabio that is make science simple and simple and accessible. And, and my recent hobby is to stream. Uh, to streaming some games in Twitch, and I'm trying to learn to how to skate, how to rollerblading. I think this is the the right term. The the next person I let me see Megan Megan Stock. Hello. Can you guys hear me? Okay, I just don't want any echoing, so I think we're good. Um, but I'm Megan Stock. Um, I live in South Africa. I'm actually in Stellenbosch as well. 
Um, and our, or our and my project name, because I'm with four, three other people, um, we are developing an ontology to connect open science technology, research RSEs, but also known as research software engineers, and the different skills and services that follow with connecting all of those. And my most recent hobby, I would have to say, is running, like very recent, because I'm very stiff and yeah, so very recent, <laughs> but I've been enjoying that a lot. And yeah, that's me. Oh, but I have to nominate. Okay, I nominate, um, I'm going to say Nina Rue. Okay, but I'm turning off my mic. Um, okay. Nina centered in the chat. Thank you. I'll read this one out. Um, and it, by the way, if folks, if you do want to do your introduction written, um, if you have a moment, maybe prepare it first uh, if you have a chance. But anyway, I'm going to read Nina's. Hi, everyone. My name is Nina Roo, and I'm currently in Stellenbosch, South Africa. I'm working on a project that focuses on developing an ontology to connect open science technology, research software engineers, and the different skills and services they have and offer. My most recent hobby is art. We need photos. And I, I nominate Ariana. Ariana, over to you. Hi, everyone. My name is Ariana Saroyan. And um, I'm in the same project as uh, Megan and uh, Nina. And um, I'm currently in Stellenbosch, South Africa. And uh, my most recent hobby is playing video games. <laughs> uh, I nominate Renee. Excellent, I'll read for Renee. Um, so, hi everyone, it's nice to meet you. My name is Renee and I live in South Africa. The project I'm working on is developing an ontology to connect open science technology, research software engineers, and the different skills and services that follow. My group members, Nina, Ariana, and Megan, and my most recent hobby is rollerblading. Ah, not the only rollerblader in the group. Uh, who would you like to nominate, Renee? Well, um, let's give it a moment. I know we've had a couple of people pop in. So, hey, Ken, it's lovely to see you. And hey, um, Nyasita, I don't know if you can hear me yet. Um, yes, I think you can. Hey, it's lovely to see you here, folks. Um, if you haven't had the chance to um, sign in yet, then um, we have sign-in sheet around about line 60 and the etherpad if you can, uh, it's not required, it's just useful. Um, who hasn't gone yet? Gemma hasn't gone yet. Gemma, do you wanna take it? Yes, thank you. Hello everyone, I'm Gemma. I'm calling in from Cape Town, South Africa as well. Though I have spent most of my time in Spain, Barcelona, where I'm originally from. I'm actually um, a participant of OLS5 with my project Ercilia, which was about um, democratizing access to machine learning tools for researchers in low resource settings. And I am, uh, I'm gonna be a facilitator for OLS6 calls. And I just wanted to hear firsthand about the project in this year. That's why I joined um, and it's great to be here. And my most recent hobby, um, well, uh, I guess it's going to be taking care of my plants in this office that I'm going to be staying in Cape Town and hoping they don't die because <laughs> I always kill them. <laughs> and I nominate, let's see, uh, uh, mm, Jennifer has a speaker. I'm not sure. Yes. I haven't yet. Thanks, Gemma. Um, I'll camera off briefly. So hi, everyone. I'm Jennifer. Um, I'm currently in London, and my project is called Open Data Custodians, um, and it's about building an open tool for connecting any uh, public domain data set like a GitHub repo to a database or API. Um, and my most recent hobby, um, I think like um, 
Harini, who picked up boxing, I recently got into HIT classes. Um, the high intensity interval training is what I think it stands for. And it's kind of like an hour of torture, but you feel really good afterwards. So it's therapeutic. Um, I will nominate Ken. Hey folks, just since we've had a few folks just join, um, I'm going to just recap what we were doing at the moment. So we have been adding, uh, we've been sharing four things as a group so that we can get through this very large and fantastic group that we have. Those four things are your name, location, project name, and your most recent hobby. And then we've been nominating um, the next person to speak. We don't have many people left but I've been marking everyone off on the roll call with a tulip as you've spoken. Um, so Ken, if you're free to unmute uh, and you'd like to just introduce those four things, please do. Um, Ereni, I nominate you to create a houseplant channel. Um, <laughs> Ken, I'm not sure if you can hear us at the moment, um, but if you want, it's also okay to introduce yourself in the chat. Uh, in the meantime, I'm just going to nominate Aman. Have you gone yet? Not yet. Yeah. Hi, everyone. So I'm Aman Goyal, and I'm in New Delhi, India right now. And title of my project is The Undergraduate's Guide to Research Software Engineering. And a recent hobby has been coffee for me, uh, in where I switched from instant coffee to properly brewed French press coffee. And that has been interesting. Although, yeah, my family is frustrated because they're like, yeah, this, this is too fancy. But yeah, that is something that I've been doing recently. And uh, let me see who's left. I nominate Gladys. Gladys, um, just checking if you can hear. If not, it's also okay to type um, an introduction into the chat if that is easier. Meanwhile, we're getting um, distracted about the plant channel, so no worries with that. Um, always happy to talk house plants because, well, uh, <laughs> um, Gladys and Ken, we would. Oh, there we go. Hello. Take it away. <laughs> okay. Uh, hi, everyone. Uh, I don't know if you can see me. My name is Gladys. <laughs> okay. My name is Gladys and I'm from Isipe, Kenya. And uh, we, are, we are working on a project that is the App Portal and Academy that aims to create a, both an academy and have a like, portal for the, targeting the undergraduate students and the uh, post-secondary school students. Uh, to train them on basic bioinformatics skills and also to synthesize them on open science. So uh, I feel like uh, synthesizing the, the young generation or in early career students about open science is a good thing because simply as for me, when I progressed to my master's studies, I did not know what is open science, but of late I'm very conversant with it. So I'll be happy to assist those students and also in doing their projects. And uh, recently, I think the only hobby I have that I love reading a lot of articles and books. Uh, yeah, that's also my side. Thank you, Gladys. Who would you like to nominate to go next? <laughs> uh, maybe I can nominate Ken. <laughs> Seem, seems fair. I'll read out Ken's, suggest, uh, Ken's introduction. So hey everyone, my name is Ken Mugambi. Um, I currently live in Nairobi, Kenya, 
We're working on developing a bioinformatics school here in Kenya to spread the bioinformatics gospel, especially to undergraduate students. My hobby is making memes. I need some of these memes. I never have enough memes. And you nominate Nyasita. Nyasita, over to you. Hi, everyone. I'm working on the same project as Ken. Um, yeah, I'm also from Nairobi, Kenya. Uh, what else are we supposed to say? <laughs> oh, our hobbies. Um, I love, I love reading. <laughs> That's what I love to do most. Yeah. Nice to meet you all. Fantastic. I think we have two people left. I have uh, Shamim and Pauline. Uh, Shamim, do you want to go first? Sure, sure. Um, hi, everyone. Um, my name is Shamim. I'm from Nairobi, Kenya, University of Nairobi. My project is on um, pre uh, coming up with a, a resource for an open source an open resource for mental health among researchers. So I'm targeting university students, yeah, university postgraduate uh, students. And my my recent hobby um, is painting. I love painting, abstract, abstract painting. Well, yeah, mostly abstract painting. Yeah. I, I nominate Pauline. <laughs> Thank you, Hi, everyone. Um, my name is Pauline. Um, shockingly, I know all the last people who've gone, so I'm in the same project as uh, Ken, <laughs> uh, um, Ken, Nyasita, and Gladys, and I'm in the same class and school with Shamim, so it's really nice to uh, <laughs> have very, very familiar faces. Um, uh, I'm working on the Hub Portal and Academy project, um, which has been explained, so I won't uh, do that again. And uh, my recent hobby has been a lot of DIYs. Um, yeah, so that's that's fun. Mostly just shelves to stack up my things up in my house because my house didn't come with shelves. So <laughs> thank you. Okay, I think we got everyone. But if we have missed anyone, now is your moment to shine. I will leave a moment of silence and just see. I think there's just crickets. Uh, so thank you. I really enjoyed those introductions and I had to exercise an incredible amount of self-control not to get excited and tell everyone, send me this, tell me more about your mushrooms. I think Fabio did go, Fabio's from Brazil. Um, this is me like looking at the categories in my brain and saying, I know uh, no effect, therefore he must have gone. Uh, <laughs> um, Yes, but everyone, please do um, if share something about your hobby in the random chat, perhaps we would love to see some of these photos and mushrooms and maybe hear about the hilarious fall when you were rollerblading. Um, so bring it all on. Um, let me check. I suspect that we are struggling for time already. Not too bad, only eight minutes. So let's see if I can not speak too long. Now, my goal is to tell you a bit about OLS. I have a feeling that you know a bit about OLS, given that you're here, but I'm just going to walk us through the program um, and give you a bit of an idea about what we're expecting over the next month. So I'm going to do that slideshow thing and then the share screen. And that looks good. Okay, are you seeing the screen in presentation mode? I actually can't see anyone's camera to see if there's any. Oh, I've got thumbs. Thank you, Paz. That was helpful. Okay, and nothing else in the chat. Fantastic. 
Okay, right. So, hello. <laughs> I hope this has your language. If you know a language that isn't on this slide, just let me know and we can add it. Uh, the only other one apart from English that I really confidently speak is Hebrew and that says Shalom. Um, look at these beautiful faces. These are the faces of the organizers in Arles. Uh, so I'm the second one along, I'm Yo. Uh, but some of the other organizers who couldn't be on the call today, we have Berenice Batu, she is French and based in Germany. Malvika Sharan, she is German Indian based in London. Emmy Tseng from Hong Kong, but based in the Netherlands because none of us live in the country where we were born and Paz who is here with us on the call today who um I will let you you've done your own introducing so I won't do it on your behalf um so we, we are the organizing team but we are by far not the most important people we're here to talk about open science uh, and to talk about community primarily um but what we care about the most is uh, that we think science, and not just science, but any research should be shared openly and made freely available with other people. Uh, <laughs> I love that, the um, other boss being your dog, I've got to hop back and say, just look at that little doggy face. Is that not a beautiful face? <laughs> okay. Um, Right, back onto my important message. Yes, sharing and building on each other's shoulders uh, rather than just, you know, uh, as a shareholder's bottom line. We, we want people to be able to benefit from each from what we learn when we do science and when we do when we do research. Um, and the we, there's more than 400 people in this community, which if, if you told me three and a half years ago that we were going to launch a community that had more than 400 people I think I would have just sat in my chair giggling for half an hour not believing you but these are some of the beautiful faces people who have been mentors people who have been experts people who have graduated from OLS and I think there's more faces than this I'm not I think that that's like about 300 and something and we're getting to the point where it's hard to fit the faces in and it is a, an amazing problem to have uh, and we would not be going without all of these people because um, these days we are actually lucky enough to be able to do things like offer stipends to mentors, to offer micro grants um, and to pay people to work on the project. But when we started, it was a 100 percent volunteer project from every single person in, in, in who offered time. And I think we were even begging, begging and borrowing for Zoom rooms that didn't expire after 40 minutes. Um, so when I say we stand on the shoulders of the community and on the shoulders of giants, I really do mean it. Um, these people are the people who have made us go. And welcome. You are now one of these people who can hop into that uh, beautiful collage of many, many faces. And we could not be more excited to have you with us. So um, what is open life science? We help individuals and research groups. You may or may not be um, in academia. That's fine. Research is research wherever it happens. But we want you to become ambassadors for open science and for open research. Um, so what that means is that you might be working on a project at the moment as part of your application. But actually, we hope that we can introduce ways of working that affect all of what you do, um, whether or not it's the specific project that you've been working on, to be open, open science, open research ambassadors, to actually share this with other people and influence a culture of sharing. Um, and I think I've already said this probably twice, but we really believe that we have to share and build on each other's shoulders if we want science to advance and not just to keep on reinventing the wheel and redoing things that were done behind closed doors and never shared. Um, and of course, people are sometimes afraid of this and sometimes very reasonably and rightfully. Um, and we will never advocate things like sharing uh, th things that are inappropriate to share. There are very good ethical reasons not to share things that might include indigenous data rights or it might include personal privacy. Um, the, so there's, the, you know, it might be med medical records is the easy example around personal privacy, but there are many other things. Um, but then there are fears that sometimes can be maybe solved or resolved like when people are worried about being scooped or being criticized so we try and teach people how to work scientifically without becoming vulnerable and making it a safe and welcoming uh, environment that helps us again build on each other's shoulders and work together so 
we try and work on things step by step and apply them one step at a time. So that's part of the reason why we have the alternating uh, cadence where one week we have group group calls where we learn from one another and from experts and one week we speak with a mentor about ways to apply things to the projects that we're working on and we hope that by working on a project you get the chance to really embed skills um, because sometimes when you go to training if you don't have a chance to practice it later on it, you sort of forget um, so we're hoping that by applying it to a project you can actually really embed it in in the ways that you work and figure out what works for your project and what doesn't, because one the one rule we have is that there is no rule for one rule for anything. <laughs> Things are different depending on context. Uh, so you probably know by now this is 16 weeks, there's cohort training, and there's hands-on practice with one-on-one -on -one mentoring. So I won't labor over that slide too long. Um, we were born from Mozilla. So they had a, what was called Mozilla Open Leaders. Um, I participated in round four of Mozilla Open Leaders and then helped to host five, six, and seven. Then I was a participant again when they decided to, rather than continue running Mozilla Open Leaders, but instead to actually encourage other people to launch their own programs, which is how OLS was born. Um, so we will refer back to the Open Leadership Framework throughout some of the cohort course and some of the structures that they have built. And um, this is one of the biggest sentences that you'll see in the open leadership framework um, that open leaders design, build and empower their projects and communities to understand, share and participate in inclusive ways. Or a uh, slightly fuzzy image here, which is that um, we will highlight different areas that we deal with um, that relate to each of the underlined parts of the sentence around participation and inclusion, sharing, um, understanding, um, and building, designing and empowering for those particular aspects. Um, so what can open science mean? It can mean many, many things. Um, maybe you are sharing data that you have created. Maybe you have written code to analyze that data. Um, or perhaps you have hardware and maybe it's the open source hardware that gathers the data. Um, or maybe it's as that your machines were very expensive and the only effective way for you to do your science was to create um, open hardware. Um, or maybe the machines didn't even exist, which is another very meaningful point. Um, you can't buy a machine off the shelf if no one's ever done that particular niche before. Open access. A lot of people talk about open science. They, they, they think about open access, but it's really only one aspect of open science. Um, and by open access, I mean the ability to actually read a scientific or research article uh, without having to pay money to get there. Um, I don't know, the other side is that unfortunately it does mean you have to pay money to publish instead, so the system is not always perfect. <laughs> um, Preprints involves sharing your results, your research results as early as you reasonably can. Uh, maybe you can even review those open access articles or preprints um, and that would be open reviews. Maybe you're sharing your training as open education, or maybe you, you don't want science to only be ivory tower. You want to have other people participating and driving that research, people who are stakeholders, and that's citizen science. And then we also would argue that scientific networking and maybe doing what we're doing today, where we've had the chance to talk to one another, that's also an important part of open science, getting to know each other and work collaboratively and share what we do. Um, and one concept that's really important to us, apart from sharing what we do, is planning, designing what you're doing um, and thinking about the pathways for people to collaborate. Uh, so this study, this is now a 10 year old study, but it's still a fantastic study, um, looked at 160 tech companies and it said that actually strategic intent and openness correlates with market performance. Or if I take that out of tech speak, I would say that actually this means that if you plan the pathways, you think carefully about how to do open, it's more likely to be successful. Uh, so you may have heard the phrase, build it and they will come, but sometimes you build it and no one comes. So if you design ways for people to get involved and for people to participate and for people to step up their involvement in your open communities, it's more likely to be successful. And when the sign posts, you know where to look. So don't let it be a thoughtless default. Um, right, so the idea is that we want to create positive culture change in your community and in the communities all around us, um, ideally collaborative and friendly communities. 
think I'm nearly done. Yes, I am done. Okay, I'm going to stop sharing. I think we have a breakout room now. Thank you for bearing with me while I talked and talked. Um, so now it's uh, time to wake up again. I'm going to pause the recording before we go and introduce breakout room. Am I right? Yes, it is breakout room. So I'm going to pause the recording and describe the breakout rooms. Okay, we hope you had the chance to, to speak a little bit with your uh, breakout room mates. I'm not sure what the right phrase for it. Co cohort mates. That sounds good. Okay. Um, so I can see some people are still typing. Please do bring, bring keep, 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 it, keep it coming. Um, I'm going to move on just so that we don't disrespect your time too badly uh, and we do try not to run over. So um, the next thing that we're going to talk about is the RLS Open Canvas. Um, so this is another tool that came from the Mozilla Open Leadership Program and I'm going to just share my screen and introduce it now. Try not to go in too much time. Right, do you see the screen? I hope you're seeing. I've got nods. Thank you so much, my friends. Okay, so this is uh, born out of something that we um, is called the Lean Canvas. Don't worry too much about that. I'm just crediting it rather than something that you have to worry about. Um, but it's a way of examining the strategy for the project that you're working on. Um, and I would say we often have a lot of assignments that we recommend people do. This is the one that if you're struggling, this is the one that I would focus on as opposed to others. Um, so I said we'd say the sentence a lot and we will. In this case, we're designing uh, to actually work on our project. Um, but this sentence we come back to many times, we highlight a different word or set of words each time. We're designing for understanding, sharing, participation and inclusion. And what does this mean? It means this cute little thing. So it's a bunch of boxes, um, but we're going to walk through the boxes, talk about why they're meaningful and why they're useful. As I mentioned, this is re reused from leanstack.com slash lean canvas um, and the license that they've shared it under is CC by 3.0, which is a license that says that you're allowed to reuse so long as you credit, which is what the buy means. Um, we'll talk more about licenses in a later cohort call. But I want to dig into what this is and why we recommend it. So, uh oh, there's a lot of text. Don't worry, we're going to step through it step by step. And there's also a link to these slides, uh, which goes into a lot more detail than I'm going to go into today. But I'm going to talk through what this might be and how I would apply it to an RLS specific project. You might want to think how you apply it to the project you are working on. So I'm going to try and follow the flow of the arrows. Uh, which means that I start on the top left of my open canvas. So first of all, what's the problem that you are trying to solve? There's probably a reason that you're doing the project that you're doing. Um, try and sum that up. I like to try and stay fitting in the box, even if the text is a little bit small, because it's your elevator pitch, right? It's the, the thing that you're sharing that is, um, you might want to tell someone else in, in, in a short number of sentences to, to, and it's okay if your first language is in English and you'd rather do this in Portuguese or Hebrew or Hindi or any other language that you might speak, do that as well. Um, so write down your problem. So I might say I want to found Open Life Science as an organization because I think that disseminating your research isn't always as obvious as it might seem. And running community organizations isn't straightforward and not something that a researcher is necessarily taught about. Um, and so I might say the organization, the, sorry, the solution, therefore, is to found an organization that trains and mentors people how to do these skills. What would my metrics be? Oh, this is a hard one. Um, like you may not have all the answers and that is OK. Um, so I'm looking at this box over here. How will I measure success? Uh, if I was honest, I would like to see academic culture change. That is hard to measure. What can I measure? I can measure um, how many people have participated, how many people are referrals, things like that. Um, I can measure proxies for whether or not we're reaching the people we want to reach. The resources required. What will you need to build an MVP? Um, an MVP stands for minimum viable product. So it doesn't have to be perfect. It doesn't have to have all of the features. But if you want the basics to get started, what would you want? 
Uh, so for OLS, I think I actually mentioned earlier, we, um, we used to have to borrow Zoom rooms. We needed that as a resource. We didn't have the money for it, but we knew we needed a Zoom room. We also used Google Docs and the biggest resource that we needed was humans. We needed people who could help mentor other people and provide an expert network. So those were perhaps some of the resources that we needed. Your project will probably look different. Uh, I'm just checking chat in case there's anything I need to address. Um, <laughs> thank you, Paz. Um, right, moving on to the next arrow. Now we've, talk we've talked about the what we're doing. Now we're talking about the who. Uh, so uh, I get distracted and start thinking about rock music when I say the who. Very bad brain, stop that. Um, contributor profiles. Who is going to be contributing to your work? Um, so in the case of OLS, I'd already recognise that humans might be one of the resources we needed. And the people that would be contributors might be open science practitioners, people who have some expertise in some uh, area around open science or open research. Um, who might be my users? Actually, they look a lot like my um, like like my contributors as well. People who are interested, there are people who might already have experience in open science and open research, or maybe they want to grow more. Um, but actually, those two can overlap. The Venn diagram does not need to be two separate circles here. Um, but this is who we're building it for: people who want to become open science ambassadors and practitioners. Who is yours? Probably different from mine, but just try to give an illustrative example about what it might look like. Next, we have the channels. How do people, how does this grow? How do people hear about you? How do um, people contribute? And how do you get more people to participate? So for OLS, our channels probably was Twitter and also our friends. So we reached out to people we knew. We said, hey, can you be a mentor? Hey, um, can you share our applications with other people? And to our astonishment, 20 something people applied to participate in RLS1. It was amazing. <laughs> like, wow, someone's gonna trust us to do this thing. Um, and they, 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 so once again, I think in our case, user channels and contributor channels were the same. They might be different for you. It might be that your user, your user channel um, you advertise on Twitter or on Slack or on your university networks or somewhere else and your contributor channels come through a different avenue. Maybe you use GitHub or maybe it's a meetup where you get your contributors from. Um, and finally, you've thought about all of those things. Think about what are you offering? Why are you different? And you don't have to be radically different, right? Um, I'm not asking for a massive business case, but I'm thinking, Maybe you are a coder and there's a library, but it's an R and you want something in Python. Or maybe you want something that's a bit faster or that's a bit easier to use. Maybe you are a qualitative researcher and you haven't seen any qualitative research in this domain. Um, and so that's what you want to see. Maybe you're developing something in your local, re your local region or maybe it's something that's in a language that hasn't been developed in before. So the differences don't have to be huge. They can be. I'm all for um, tearing down the establishment and trying a whole new way. Um, but it's also fine if the differences are just small and make incremental change. Um, is that clearish? I think I can do the stop share. So um, I'm just actually before I do there, if you want to step through this in more detail, the slides actually hop through step by step by box by box by box. Um, so I'm not going to go through that over again, but it's a useful reference if you want to ask questions without having to ask anyone in real life. However, if you have questions and you want to throw them in the OLS 6 Slack, do that as well. Um, okay, that was Open Canvas. I'm going to pause my breath. You've listened to me for far too long. Any more questions, my friends? Questions, comments can go either in the etherpad. This would be line yep. 182. Hello. Oh, take it away. Yeah, it's Mahmoud. So, uh, I have a little uh, concern with about that uh, open canvas. That uh, box where you have um, contributor, user, I kind of find it confusing. Who, uh, how do I demarcate bet like, uh, between the contributor, user, and maybe, does that have anything to do with like collaborator? So it's kind of confusing to me. 
those are some great questions um so in your case you're you're the open science community in nigeria right yes yes yeah yeah so i suspect and i'm just sort of guessing here um so tell me if i'm wrong <laughs> but um okay. your collaborators might be also some of your contributors um and one of the fun things is that your users may be your contributors or may grow to become contributors. And that's actually something that you can design your project to do. Um, so I don't know what shape yet you imagine that um, Open Science Community Nigeria might look like, but if you had a meetup, these people might start as users, they come, they participate in the meetup, and then later they say, hmm, I'm interested in contributing as well. Um, yeah. So it may be that there, there is a pathway, you know, um, that they engage yes. in different ways, but it exactly. could be that it really does overlap. Does that help? Okay. Oh, yeah, yeah, very much. Thank you. Fantastic. Any more questions, my friends? I hope I've left enough chance for everyone to ask questions if you wish. You can also add them line 182. Um, so we have 15 minutes left. I'm going to say we're going to look at a five minute breakout. Uh, so the idea is we want to share our mission and vision with each other, maybe with reflection on the open canvas and how, it, whether that's made you think when we were going through it, what it could look like. Um, we need to make the breakout rooms very quickly. <laughs> um, I'm just going to do that unless you've done that, Paz. No, that's fine. Uh, you are muted. I did see you say something. Yeah, I'm just going to work on the breakout rooms. If you just bear with me, let's pause. Resuming recording. Cool. OK, hopefully in our very short breakout rooms, you had the chance um, as a group just to talk a little bit about what your project mission and vision is. Um, and sometimes the act of just explaining it in itself helps make it clearer. And sometimes there's even the chance to offer feedback, although in a five minute session, that may be a challenge. <laughs> um, keep these conversations going in the OLS 6 cohort room as well. Um, because I think we can never convey anything fully as we might wish in five minutes. Uh, so the final things we have to do, we have a uh, talk about roadmaps. We don't have long. So I'm actually going to skip some of the slides and just suggest that actually think about um, the fact that if you join a project and you look at a project, if you know where they're going, you're more likely to want to join it. So think about what your vision is and what your goals are. Think what's happening short term, and that might be in the next couple of weeks or a couple of months. What's happening medium term? Um, so that might be by the end of the year or maybe in the next six months. And long term, if you had the resources you needed, what would you like to see happening in your project? Um, and if you can actually write those down and articulate them, share them with people who might be interested and involved in your community, they'll be able to think of tasks they can do. They'll be able to know whether or not your vision aligns with theirs. Um, and get, get basically give people the milestones that help them move on to what they want to work on next. Um, so there are some more slides that go into more detail. Um, those are linked in the etherpad, which is around about line 249 right now. That just gives you an idea of how much content everyone's written in the breakout rooms. This is pretty cool. Thank you, everyone. Um, and you can feel free to browse through those slides on your own time. We will cover road mapping again a bit more later. So don't worry too much uh, if you don't have time to look at those slides right now. 